Hi everyone, I'm Yin Ming. Today I will introduce you DeepServe, a large language model serving system optimized for good put with preview and decoding disaggregation. This is a joint work of me, Shen Yu, Jun Da, and many others on the slide. So large language models such as Gemini, GPT-4, and the Cloud represent a groundbreaking shift in generative AI. They start to reshape existing applications ranging from search engines to operating systems and enable fundamentally new applications like universal chatbots and programming assistants. So unlike traditional web applications, an AI large language model service responds to a user query in two phases. The preview phase processes a user's prompt composed of a sequence of tokens to generate the first token of the response in one step. Meanwhile, the intermediate states, known as k-value caches, are generated at each token position, which are needed in later decoding steps. Then, the decoding phase sequentially generates subsequent tokens in multiple steps. Each decoding step generated a new token based on tokens generated in previous steps until reaching a termination token. Also, the key-value caches are generated during each step. This dual-phase process distinguishes large language model services from traditional services. So the latency of a large language model service is uniquely measured by two key metrics. The time to first token, TTFT, which is the duration of the preview phase, and the time per output token, TPOT, which represents average time taken to generate the subsequent tokens. So different applications place varying demands on these two metrics. For example, real-time chatbots prioritize low time to first token for response promptness, while time per optical token only remains important until it is faster than human reading speed. Conversely, programming assistant emphasizes both metrics for real-time code completion suggestions. In the face of an increasing variety of large language applications and the high cost of serving large language model requests, our goal is to use the fewest number of GPUs to serve as many requests as possible while meeting various latency requirements of different applications. So to formalize this goal, let me first define some terminologies. Service level objective is the application-specific latency requirements. For large language model applications, we have SLO for both TTFT and TPOT. Then we have SLO attainment, which is the proportion of requests that meet the SLOs. At last, with the preset SLO attainment goal, say 90%, per GPU good put depicts the maximum request rate that can be served while adhering to the attainment goal for each GPU provisioned. With these terminologies, it is straightforward to see that our final goal is just to maximize the per GPU good put. To achieve our goal, let us first examine the problems with existing large language model serving systems. As the preview and decoding phases share the large language model weights and working memory, existing large language model serving systems typically collocate both phases on the same GPUs and batch the preview and decoding phase across the requests. This method maximizes the overall throughput across all the users and its requests. The idea behind batching is simple by loading the model weights from GPU high bandwidth memory to SRAM once, it can do computation for more requests, thus increasing the GPU utilization. However, this simple strategy has two problems when latency comes into play. First, collocation leads to strong preview decoding interference. This is because a preview step often takes much longer than a decoding step. As the figure shows, when request one is in its decoding phase, three new requests come one by one. When batching two phases together, decoding steps in the batch are delayed by the preview steps, significantly elongating their time per output token. Similarly, the inclusion of decoding steps also contributes to a non-trivial increase in time to first token. Secondly, since the size of the larger language models often exceeds the memory capacity of a single GPU. Model partism is commonly used in large language model serving. Common partism strategies include inter-operator partism, which splits the model into stages and run computation in a pipeline fashion, and intra-operator partism, which distributes 
each operator's computation across multiple devices. Existing co-location approach makes the two phases share the same problem strategy. However, as we previously see, the preview phase deals with a new sequence, often comprising many tokens, and processes these tokens concurrently. Unlike preview, each decoding step only processes one new token generated by the previous step. This leads to a significant computational differences between the two phases, where the preview phase is usually compute bound and the decoding phase is usually memory bandwidth bound. As a result, in existing approach, the preview and the decoding computation inevitably share the same resource and parallel configuration, despite their very different computational characteristics. This usually leads to suboptimal serving performance. For example, the preview phase tends to be compute bound and benefits from more intra-operator parallelism to reduce the ex execution time to meet the tight time to first token SRO. By contrast, the optimal parallel configuration of the decoding phase often depends on the running batch size. In existing systems, due to this coupling, resource allocation and parallelism plans are tailored to satisfy the more demanding one of time to first token and time per offer token, which may not be ideal for the other. This often leads to resource of provisioning to meet both SROs. To overcome these problems, we propose to disaggregate the preview and decoding phases of, of large language model inference, assigning them to independent model instances on separate GPUs. Our approach has two benefits. First, operating each phase independently on different GPUs eliminates the preview decoding interference. Secondly, it naturally divides the SRO satisfaction problem into two optimization problems, where the preview instance optimizes for the time to first token and the decoding instance optimizes for the time per output token. We can then choose the most suitable parallelism and resource allocation strategy for each phase to meet their specific latency requirements. Let's go through a simple experiment to see why disaggregation is beneficial. We serve a 13 billion large language model on a single A100 GPU with a synthetic workload flowing Poisson process. We gradually increase the request rates and measure the 90 percentile latencies of time to first token and time per output token. Suppose we set the SRO attainment goal to 90%, the time to first token SRO to 400 milliseconds, and the time per output token SRO to 40 million tokens. We observe the existing co-location systems can support roughly three requests per second that stay within the time to first token SRO using one GPU. Whereas for the time per output token, it stands for uh, 1.6 requests per second. Since we need to satisfy both constraints, the per GPU output of existing co-located system becomes the minimum of the two, i.e. 1.6 requests per second. The performance is significantly boosted after disaggregation. The preview instance and the decoding instance can both achieve better requests per second than the previous one because the interference is eliminated. As shown in the figure below, one preview instance achieves roughly 5.6 requests per second and one decode instance achieves roughly 10 requests per second. More importantly, now we can flexibly allocate two preview instances to pair with one decoding instance. With three GPUs in total, the per GPU output becomes roughly 3.3 requests per second. This experiment shows that the simple disaggregation without any parallelism yields a two times higher per GPU output. However, the benefit of disaggregation is not free launch. We need to transfer the key value caches from preview instances to the decoding instances, and this incurs communication overhead. Also, our optimization target per GPU output is still difficult to optimize because there are so many factors that are related to it. The workload pattern, the SAO requirements, parallel strategies, resource allocation, and network bandwidth create a complicated design space to navigate. To this end, we designed this serve to solve the above challenges. Given the large language model, the workload pattern, and the SRO requirements, 
this serve will decide the placement to serve this specific logical line model with disaggregation. This, the placement includes the parliament strategy for pre and decoding instance, the number of each to deploy, and how to place them onto the physical cluster. This serve features two placement algorithms based on the cluster's network bandwidth and online opt scheduling optimizations to deal with the real-world workload. So if the nodes in the cluster are connected with high bandwidth network like infinite band, the key value cache transmission time is negligible even if it happens between two nodes. In this case, we can optimize the parliament configurations for preview and decoding instances separately. We model the large language model inference execution time to simulate the per GPU good put for a specific parliament configuration. So we can just enumerate the possible parliament configs within the resource limits to obtain the optimal one for each phase. Then we can use replication to match the overall traffic. For clusters without high bandwidth cross-node connection, we utilize the NV link inside the node, which is commonly available in today's AI cluster. We observe that the key value cache transmission only happens between the same layer of the pre and decoding instances. So we can add the constraint to require the same stage of pre and decoding instances to be on the same node so that the transmission can always utilize the high bandwidth and link connection, just as the figure shows. We also develop online scheduling optimizations that adapt to the nuances of real-world workloads. To mitigate the pipeline bubbles caused by non-uniform prompt lengths, we schedule the request in a way that balances the execution time across all batches in the pipeline. To combat the burstiness in workloads that can cause a flood of key value caches to transfer, this serve employs a poor method for key value cache transmission rather than a push approach using the GPU memory of the preview instances as a queuing buffer. The resource and partisan plan in this serve is optimized for a specific workload pattern, which may become suboptimal if the workload pattern changes over time. So that this serve implement periodic, periodic replanning to monitor the workload pattern and rerun the placement algorithm on the fly. We deploy this serve on a cluster with four nodes, each with eight A100 GPUs connected with Erwin Link. We evaluate the serve under different sizes of larger rank models, ranging from 13 billion to 175 billion, and various application data sets, including chatbot, code completion, and summarization. We compare this serve to two state-of-the-art large language model serving systems, VLM and DeepSpeed MII, on the metric SL attainment. For chatbot, this serve can tolerate 4.6 times request rate. Here, the dotted vertical line shows when the corresponding system achieves 90% SL attainment. Also, this serve can handle up to 1.8 times more stringent SLO. The results on code completion and summarization data set are similar. We also make a latency breakdown of the requests in this serve, and find that the key value catch transmission only accounts for less than 0.1% of the total latency. Even by examining the CDF of the absolute transmission time, we observe that over 95% of the requests experience a delay of less than 30 milliseconds, despite our testbed only have limited cross-node bandwidth. You can also check our paper for more experiments. So in summary, we present this serve, a new large language model serving architecture that disaggregates the pre and decoding computation. Our findings affirm that as latency becomes an increasingly important metric for larger language model services, pre and decoding disaggregation is a vital strategy in promising improved performance and service quality guarantees. This serve is open source on GitHub, and you can check the link here for more details. Thanks for listening. I'm glad to take questions now.